Well, thank you all for coming to the second day of our research symposium. Uh, it's my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our keynote speaker today. Uh, it's often customary to make the speaker feel good that, you know, to say that the speaker needs no introduction. Uh, and uh, it's not always true, but <laughs> today it's definitely true. I don't think uh, Gary Kasparov needs an introduction. Uh, it's, uh, 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 you, know, you know, everybody knows who he is, but maybe you don't know some of the details. So Gary was born in Baku, Azerbaijan, in the Soviet Union in 1963. Uh, he became the under-18 chess champion of the USSR at age 12, and the world under-20 champion at age 17. Uh, he came to international fame at the age of 22 as the youngest world champion in history in 1985. He defended his title five times, including in, a legendary, in multiple legendary series of matches against arch rival Anatoly Karpov. Uh, Kasparov broke Bobby Fischer's rating record in 1990, and his own peak rating uh, remained unbroken until 2013 for a long time. <laughs> His famous matches against Deep Blue in 1996-97 uh, uh, is probably one of the reasons that we are here today, so it really catapulted AI into the popular imagination. Uh, Kasparov uh, was one of the first, Kasparov was one of the first prominent Soviets to call for democratic and market reforms and was an early supporter of Boris Yeltsin's push to break up the Soviet Union. Uh, in 1990, he and his family escaped ethnic violence in his native Baku as the USSR collapsed. In 2005, Kasparov in his 20th year as, world's, as the world's top rated player retired from professional chess to join the vanguard of the Russian pro-democracy movement. In 2012, Kasparov was named chairman of the New York-based Human Rights Foundation, succeeding Vaclav Havel. HRF promotes individual liberty worldwide and organizes the Oslo Freedom Forum. Facing imminent arrest during Putin's crackdown, Kasparov moved from Moscow to New York City in 2013. Uh, the US-based Kasparov Chess Foundation promotes the teaching of chess in education systems around the world. Its program is in use in schools across the US and around the world in places like Brussels, uh, Joburg, Singapore, Mexico City, and a lot of other places. Gary and his wife, Daria, travel frequently to promote the proven benefits of uh, chess in education. He's also been a deep thinker uh, uh, on cybersecurity, and his talk today will be focused on that topic. Gary. Good morning. Yes. Just following your introduction. So I always want to tease my American audience, just making a little correction about my birthplace. You know, I'm saying I was born and raised in the deep south right next to Georgia. <laughs> Which is technically correct. It was the Republic of Azerbaijan right next to the Republic of Georgia. But th these days, actually, people know better the map of the former USSR. So they, it's because, you know, I remember when I grew up, they said, ah, Americans, they didn't know nothing. So they couldn't find USSR on the map. Now they can even find Kharkiv, you know, just as the. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so where do I start? Um, uh, oh, of course, I started with chess because that's, that's why I'm here, so is the... Uh, uh, and um, I can say that, you know, it's, it's, it's what is the connection between chess and cybersecurity? I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about strategy, because I will make this case throughout my talk that uh, the success in today's world, and we're talking about AI, because AI is behind everything now. It's not the smartest human, it's not the fastest computer, but it's a combination, it's an interface. So, and at the end of the day, it's, it's a human link. What makes difference is a human link. Because that's, yesterday I had another talk, and I actually, I, I used my last few sentences from that talk to start this one. I said, it's this, is you can be ahead of the competition uh, just uh, uh, with a faster machine for a while. But for lasting advantage, you need to put human on top, so that's, I talked about freedom and why people in the free world could have an advantage over people from unfree world. I think that's, that's, that's the key of this talk. And, and uh, um, I'll start, you know, with, with chess. So why uh, uh, chess um, made me suitable for, 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 for this uh, um, topic. And, uh, um, and the lessons that I learned from chess. 
That's, that was an intention. Okay. So let's start with a nice picture. November 10, 1985, in Moscow. Um, as you can guess, I, uh, I became world champion just the day before. Um, and I have this laurel. And can, you can imagine the atmosphere in the, in, in the hall. Everybody is hugging me, kissing me. So this is you, Gary. Oh. I don't recall all these people. But I remember one person who approached me and did something unexpected. Uh, it was a widow of the former world champion Tigran Petrosian, one of my mentors, Rona Petrosian. So she reached out, looked at me, and instead of doing all these trivial things, she said, young man, I'm sorry for you. What? I'm 22. I'm the best on, on this planet. Sky is the limit. You're sorry for me? Yes, I said. I'm sorry for you because the happiest day of your life has just passed. Oof. Can you imagine? Just, 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 just. Years, you know, passed away. And, and then I thought maybe that was the best thing that happened to me. Because we all know, so, you know, so much so soon. You know, you, you, you want things early, what's next? 22. And I thought that maybe that's, again, that's, that was not a curse, but rather prophecy to prove her wrong. And um, thanks to my mother, my late mother, who I lost to COVID uh, about 15 months ago, um, I knew that in chess, it was not just about winning. No, of course, it's about winning. I mean, it's, it's winning or losing. But it's also about making a difference. So that's the, that was the way I could stay on top for so long. People always ask me, what's the secret? There's no real secret there. It's just, you know, you recognize the fact that you have to make improvements on your own. I'll just say a few more words just, you know, when we move down, down the road. So um, uh, then I, when I stopped playing chess in 2005, I wrote this book, How Life Imitate Chess. It's in was in 24 languages. In some languages, I have to ask that it, it was really the title of the book. Um, and uh, the idea of the book was to um, share my experience and to find a way to project it to other walks of life. Uh, actually, the book was first published in Europe because in America, the publisher said, I would like the book of tips. I said, I'm not giving you tips. I said, that's the, it's, it's, it's beneath me, frankly speaking. So, I'm giving you my story. Uh, and then you just you decide what's good or what's bad. So it, it, it was published in America as well. So, but after it was published in Britain, and of course, they made cuts. They cut chess, biography. This is more, this is well, uh, uh, English edition, Br British edition is, is based on we, Americans, you. <laughs> so this is more bombast, strict to business. But hey, that's, that was published here as well. And, uh, um, in this book, I, I analyzed uh, you know, different things, you know, including the uh, big question of style. That's, that's probably important just for, uh, for, for, for a talk on cybersecurity as well. Because I think it's one of the mistakes made by, by my colleagues from speaking circuits. So this, it's, uh, it's to tell you, oh, you have to make certain corrections to become a better decision maker. Uh, are you so sure? Why should you go against your nature? No, you, there are certain techniques and, you know, to improve your decision making. But if you are more aggressive or more defensive, that's not, that's not your vice. That's not your weakness. That's you. At the end of the day, decision making is as unique as fingerprints or DNA. It's us. All we can do is to actually to make sure we, we can improve on certain things, you know, discover our weaknesses. But, uh, um, uh, understand so what's the what's the best way to approach certain battles because at the end of the day it's just when we meet an opposition it's just if let's say it's opposition is roughly equal uh, then it's about our ability to create an environment the landscape of the battle that d benefits our strengths and uh, covers our weaknesses and vice versa the opponent so that's why you have to study your opponent but first of all you have to study yourself okay, going back to my mother's advice if you keep challenging your, your own excellence, you will never be short of opponents. 
So that's, and I knew that, you know, even the best games I played in my life, I always made, not mistakes, but tiny inaccuracies. And uh, finding these inaccuracies, not resting my laurels, uh, not uh, 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 ignoring uh, the opposition that left behind, that's, that was a secret for next success. Because every day I met people who I beat yesterday, day before, uh, I knew that I could meet them with new ideas. So again, make sure that you know that you understand that the learning from your successes is also important. In my book also, one of my uh, key sound bites was the success is the worst enemy of the future success. Because again, we all humans, we, we become complacent. Um, now, let's talk about the game of chess it, uh, itself. Um, often, you know, I dealt with the fact that it was before the Queen's Gambit, of course. I'm sure many of you saw that. <laughs> yes, it's hard to find you know, an audience that didn't see it. So, uh, uh, and I was very proud to be a chief consultant of the show. Um, so the game of chess was treated with little suspicion, because oh, chess, you know, it's, it's, it's not, and nothing that is, is, is or, or anything that is not on the front page of a newspaper or on the big t TV shows is not treated with real respect. As a matter of fact, chess, you know, has been used very broadly uh, in, uh, in every field, including Hollywood. So it's the, uh, it, was, it, it, it wasn't like uh, the best proof of, the, of uh, an in intelligence of a, of a character. And uh, you could see vampires play chess, uh, aliens play chess, young wizards play chess, Harry Potter. And uh, on the bottom, Humphrey Bogart plays chess. Casablanca, I think. It's one of my favorite movies. By the way, even I tried even some such to look at the position there. And I just found that because Humphrey Bogart was a decent club player. So it was a real opening. By the way, many of the games, chess games, Somehow they put it the total nonsense on the board. So I just, I, I have no idea. So the most popular mistake is, is 90, 90 degrees. So this is A1 square is white. <laughs> Statistically, it should be 50, 50. But it's somehow 80% wrong. I don't, this is a mystery for me that is beyond my understanding. I never understood it. Now, but that was a real opening from a popular, uh, it's popular in 1940, 41, French defense. So I just found it. And this one is, uh, you recognize this one? Anybody recognizes this one? from Russia as well. The year I was born, 1963, Kronstein. By the way, absolute real game. They just had a one, the game played by another world champion, Boris Spassky against, and also it played Bronstein. Brilliant game, played in 1961. And Kronstein won this brilliant game and then came out to uh, uh, conspire global evil. Yeah, so 1963, so. But of course, he was beaten by, by British men. 30 years ago, by the way, I took revenge as a Russian. I beat Nigel Short in London for the World Championship match. <laughs> um, so uh, that's, you know, we see chess is there. You know, even John Wayne played chess once. Yeah, McClintock, just, you know, that's, you know just making moves, amazing. So that's the, uh, brilliant also, uh, the first um, uh, uh, Thomas Crown Affair. Oof, was seen as love scene is when they play chess. So chess was, but again, it's just somehow it was, they treated it with, again, with very little respect. So now let's go from, from entertainment to science. Alfred Binet, the father of IQ test. You can read it. He believed all the way back at the end of the 19th century that the game of chess could hold a secret for or human cognition. He was fascinated by people who play chess, especially those who can play chess blind. Because by the way, not that difficult, trust me. So it's the, uh, and uh, uh, he thought that if he could unlock the secret, he'll understand how it works. Very flattering. As a chess player, very flattering. Mm -mm. That's the, I can tell you, the aptitude for playing chess is nothing else than the aptitude for playing chess. It's, uh, Maybe I'm reveal a professional secret, but I have to be honest with you. Uh, but interestingly enough, this belief somehow was transferred from to uh, actually two generation up to the founding fathers of computer science, Alan Turing, 
Claude Shannon, Norbert Wiener, they all believed that the, uh, the ultimate test for machines intelligence would be winning chess game against the strongest players on the planet. They believed it. By the way, few know that uh, Alan Turing actually, among many great things he did, he also wrote the first chess program. It sounds easy today, but he wrote it without a computer. He literally wrote the program, so, and, and it, it could play chess. Not the great, but still, you know. Uh, at his uh, centenary uh, celebration in, in, in Manchester, so when I was, just, I was honored to actually open, open a plaque uh, for him in the University of Manchester. So I asked my German friends, programmers, to, to put it, this paper machine into computer, and I played an exhibition game just you know, to, to celebrate his genius. But you can hardly blame them for believing that the way to win would be to emulate human thinking. They had no access to massive computing power. They had no idea about Moore's law. So, uh, and that's why they, they, they made a conclusion. And again, how can you blame Claude Shannon, who just calculated that the number of legal moves in the game of chess is 10 to the 46 power? Mm, it's incalculable. So that's why the only way for machine to win is just to, to somehow emulate the way we make moves. It's very rare, you know, just I can afford this kind of verdict, they were wrong. Okay, this is, we cannot blame them, just, but they were wrong, and we'll see why. Since, you know, this is the early days of computer science, uh, there was this trend, you know, just let's make chess play. And uh, they use it all over the place, even in Los Alamos, in the, new, in, 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 uh, in the main laboratory doing nukes. So they had the game of chess, actually truncated chess board. So they started with four and four, then just, you know, six and six. So the smaller chess boards, just to, to see how machines could, could, could uh, uh, respond. Um, and uh, uh, in, in 60s and 70s, you know, after, after just with, with Minimax, you know, so this is, this, they, they actually pushed, you know, machines just higher and higher. But you will, will, you'll see that it's, they were still very, very weak. What you see on this picture now is, um, um, this is called a simultaneous exhibition. I guess many of you know that's is when the grandmaster goes around making moves. You know, the, the oh, unique things about this event was that I played uh, 32 computers. Uh, no, of course, moves have been executed by humans, but machines made suggestions. Maybe some of you have these antique pieces from the 80s. So that's the uh, uh, one, one pack of them, there were four manufacturers, eight, eight, eight computers each. One of them carried even my name. I just signed a contract with this comp company from, from Hong Kong. And um, I won all the games, all 32. Nobody was surprised. People would be surprised if it was the opposite, if I drew a game or, or lost games. Or this, this. Um, and when I look at this picture, you know, it reminds me of the golden age of human machine competition. Because machines were weak but my hair was strong. <laughs> um, 12 years later, I played only one computer. Now, I always remind my audience that it was a rematch, because I won the first one in Philadelphia a year earlier. Just, you know, for the historic record, so we just have to all. Um, and many, many think that, oh, I actually is being repeated. That was the dawn of uh, AI. Mm. Let me tell you that the, the machine that played against me and, and won the match was as intelligent as your alarm clock. A very expensive one, 10 million plus dollars a piece, but it was not intelligent. And the secret is it didn't have to be. Unlike the expectations of the founding fathers, the way machines dominated the game of chess, and we'll see other games as well, called brute force. No, they had some algorithms still, but still a brute force. And this is, I think it's still a fundamental uh, misunderstanding of our relations with computers. I, I do many presentations and it's same, you know, same sort of response. People believe that if machine doesn't do things perfectly, it's no good. But there's no perfection in this universe. The 100% is, is not achievable. All we have to get from machine is to do better to make fewer mistakes. Why did Blue won the match? It made fewer mistakes. Did it play perfect chess? Ha, uh-huh. 
Today, today, if you have a chess app on your device, it's stronger than the blue. And if you can have a chess engine downloaded on your laptop, it's much, much stronger than Magnus Carlsen, current world champion. Actually, the difference between this kind of device and Magnus Carlsen is about the same as between Usain Bolt and Ferrari. Now, you can run equally 50 meters, but then, sorry, goodbye. Is it bad or good? It's a fact. So I, uh, when people say, oh, machines, that's the, they bring the end of our world, I say, look, I was the first knowledge worker who had his job threatened by a computer. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't turn to be a Luddite, so I'm not going to destroy them. I just, yeah, I thought, well, what else? So just, it's just, we just have to find out the way to, to, to work with them. Uh, no, but now, 25 years later, I sound very uh, relaxed. Imagine, I was in the rage then. And it, it's not just because I lost to the machine. It was the first match I lost, period, in my life. I was a world champion of 12 years, and I thought I was unbeatable. Was wrong, and um, and I just you know it's, it's as I said the match was not perfect. If you just put this, this these games onto your chess engine, they they will be laughing loud. Ah, mistake, 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 mistake. Actually, I found very quickly that I just I was not top mentally prepared because I won the first match in '96 and I thought I could probably do the same. And of course, I wanted to play with IBM, the re rematch. I believe I had my I was in my rights to to demand the match. But they made a good business decision. I was really angry with Lou Gershner and the IBM team. Yeah, they benefited tremendously. So the IBM shares rose 22% over two weeks. That's pretty nice. So that's just, I think it's somehow connected to the match. So, um, and they said no. No, I understand it was a good business decision because they also realistically knew at the time that I was probably still better. So and in the next match, they could lose. But anything about winning again would be bad for, for the image. So and by the way, the match, now I know it's, it's, it's it was also it's one of the curse. For me, now I think it's a blessing because, you know, it's, it's for common good. So many people told me that, you know, they actually joined not only IBM, the computer science because of this match. Great. So maybe I made a contribution. A little sacrifice for me, for my pride, but great contribution for, 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 for the world. But still, you know, in 1997, I wanted to play again. And no, well, no, it didn't work out. So, and they, they retired the blue. I, I didn't know what's happened with the blue. Actually, I found it's now making sushi in JFK Airport. <laughs> uh, terminal 5. So, as this is, this is, this is JetBlue Terminal. So, I, I love sushi, never ate there. You can guess, guess why. So, um, um, and now serious stuff. So, it's the. Uh, since it's academic audience, so we just have to make proper analysis. Uh, that's about the progress made by machines and humans. Now, you can see three humans. I picked up Bobby Fischer, Gary Kasparov, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, 1972, 19, the year 2000, and Magnus Carlsen, the, the, his peak was about a few years ago. So this is 2018, not 2019, pre-COVID. Pre so um, linear. Not much. So that you see this there. And it's despite the fact that, you know, we have more and more people, by the way, just, you know, playing chess. So because the pyramid is growing. So that's why you have some sort of inflation. But even with this inflation, it's, the, it's about the same. So it's, those are the computers. Again, I just, we don't have time to go through all of them. That's the, that's the difference I told you. Magnus Carlsen, 2882. This is, that's, no, that, that, that's not exactly the computer that you can, machine that you can create by using your laptop. You can specialize uh, hardware, but still, you know, it's, it's not, you can buy it. That's not, you know, you don't need IBM to build it now, and that, that's the difference. Now, that was the, on top you see something that is important. Because if everything is built on um, brute force, and, and new algorithm, but still brute force, Alpha zero algorithm, something else. And people kept asking me about alpha zero because since chess was quote unquote solved, the scientists looked at other games. And one of them was Go. How to challenge Go? Because Go is mathematically is, 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 is more challenging. So it's the, and um, I think that's important to actually to, uh, to um, sort out this misunderstanding because 
When people say alpha zero, they, they always think go, but actually alpha zero is, 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 is a mechanism or just algorithm that, that is, could, be, could apply, to, be apply to anything. The team of uh, DeepMind, uh, led by Demis Hassabis, who as a kid was a very good chess player, so they decided to take on Go, and uh, they had this program, Alpha Go, not Alpha Zero, Alpha Go, and uh, uh, they challenged the top players in Go, and they beat them. Uh, and he, people were, I, I'm not, I know the rules of the Go, but I just don't pretend to know, you know, the, anything about the game. Uh, they, um, they, they were, I was told, and I read it many times, that many moves machines made, they were phenomenal. So this is something brand new. So this is, machine came up with ideas that were not, uh, not known before. So, um, I was not very impressed because, okay, Go is just again more complicated. And the ways Go, the, the, if you look at the development of the game of Go today, it's like just 200 years ago. So there's less knowledge, human knowledge in the game. And, uh, and then the real story actually started afterwards because they had a, a genius idea to um, uh, test uh, the same algorithm, but with zero human knowledge. That's why it's called Alpha Zero. Zero human knowledge. Basically, just the rules of the game. Then this algorithm plays millions of games against itself. Of course, you need Google to actually to, to have this luxury, but they, they had access. And then they created a machine that designed its own system of play, own patterns, against the machine that was fed by human knowledge. And they put them against each other. They played 100 games. You know the score? 100 to nothing. The machine that uh, was relieved from human liabilities won 100 games. That's, that's the beginning of Alpha Zero concepts. And um, I sat with Demis in London. I said, look, Go is it's underdeveloped, if you look at chess. How about doing the same for chess? They did. They created Alpha Zero chess. By the way, there's Alpha Zero StarCraft, Alpha Zero, what you say that this is, they, it's the, they, they use this concept, you know, now just applying it to virtually any, any, any game that can find. It was not as easy because they, they put it against oh, many matches. They started with Stockfish, one of the leading programs, and that's why we can actually measure the rating of Alpha, Alpha Zero. Alpha Zero, uh, the first match they played, Alpha Zero, also 100 games, won 28 games, 72 draws, no losses, which is a phenomenal score. And with white pieces, you know, 50 pieces, it had 25 wins. I mean, that's just an insane score. Now, what is interesting also, that's the, it's, it, Conventional wisdom was that if you, you know, just, uh, uh, if you introduce stronger and stronger machines, because machines don't blunder, so the, the, the game of chess will look more like a trench war, like a World War I, because it's, they, just, they look at each other, you know, they shoot occasionally. Ah, Alpha Zero played the most aggressive, you may call romantic chess. I was very happy because I'm an aggressive player. So and it sacrificed the material. No, even I make this mistake. We cannot use human terms describing machines. When, when machines sacrifice something, it doesn't mean sacrifice. It means it sees advantages. It, just, it's, it gives a material, it gains something else. An alpha zero algorithm actually you know, was far more flexible. We saw them time and again beating strongest computers because it was one ply, two plies ahead by anticipating. And again, machines don't blunder. They just couldn't see this, 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 what's, what's coming. Many times you sacrifice the material, played one, you know, a few pawns down, a piece down, and then just, you know, wow. If Stockfish could be surprised or Commodore, they would be. <laughs> um, now, same effect was in other games. Now, is it the end of the world? Ah, absolutely not. That brings us back to, to the human role. Uh, Alpha Zero has some weaknesses, and that's what humans can decide, they, they, uh, identify quite easily. Because when you just do this algorithm, or just the patterns based on 60 million games, so you create all the patterns that are supported by numbers of games. But imagine if some of the evaluations are not perfect, and they're not. So for instance, the bishop and knight. So it gives bigger advantage to bishop, because statistically, you know, there's many more games. Where just, but in the opening, 
it's not that right. Now, what it takes for alpha zero to correct this mistake on its own? It has to lose a few hundred thousand games, simply statistically to, to, to balance. For humans, I can do it instantly. So just make a little tweak. That gives an idea how we you know, um, um, uh, remain relevant, not to become redundant in, 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 in uh, this, uh, this combination. So that's, that's an idea of what I called, after losing to Deep Blue, advanced chess, humans plus machines. How can we work together? So it's, and uh, this, by the way, also just works, uh, uh, or actually doesn't work for, for computer in uh, Alpha Zero in uh, uh, video games. It will beat you in StarCraft easily on one map. But you start changing the map, you have to start from the scratch. So this is, there's no, machines are perfect in the closed framework. That's what we know. If the framework is closed, they'll do the job. There's no, I'm not aware, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, that any machine is, is available now to transfer the knowledge from one closed framework to another closed framework. That's, that's still our job. That's, yeah. Maybe we belong to the last few decimal places. So what? We can still make a decisive impact by just, you know, by tweaking uh, this machine, offering our human, human advice. Now, enough of chess. I've, time is running out. So let's go back to, to uh, uh, cybersecurity. Uh, and uh, um, as in chess, as I said, it's, it's, it's all about strategy. And, it's the, and we can see now that the new technology is empowering um, mm, uh, uh, cyber wars. Uh, sometimes, you know, they can use primitive technology. That's the, what I'm seeing, what you're seeing here is a very primitive technology. So it's the, it's, by the way, I tracked it on my own with my team. So that's all the way back to 2016, 2017, the rise of Donald Trump. So I'm not, I don't, don't want to be political here, just it's, 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 it's to, to study the case. Um, there were many MAGA accounts in America that we believe were propelled by throw factories in, in, in another country. Actually, it's the, I have to give credit to Vladimir Putin's uh, uh, cyber, cyber troops that they started this kind of operation very early. Back in 2004, 2005, they had to make a choice how to deal with the pro-democracy movement in Russia. So either to use Chinese model and just to put a firewall or to be, become more creative. They opted for latter. And the idea was, oh, uh, people will still move on. But what about in us creating this, this is the fake news, uh, the industry, so the whole industry, the troll factories. And uh, they did a great job in Russia. So it's, it's because a lot of people, you know, just, they, they came in and, and they're not being met by the propaganda. This is not the front page of Pravda newspaper. No, now it is in Russia. They just, you know, they, 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 they're back to the Soviet Union. But in 2005, they were very different. So the idea was, you know, you just, you have a lot of true information and a little bit of fake. So basically you have this, your story, and you split it between different, different uh, outlets. And that's uh, also, the, it's not a frontal attack on truth, but it's spreading doubts. I always call Putin merchant of doubt. It's far more effective. You don't have to sell one ideology. And that's, by the way, it allowed uh, Putin's propaganda to work both with far right and far left. Typically, the Soviet propaganda work only was far left. They thought any, anything good, anything that disturbs the balance, the, the, the main, attacks the mainstream po uh, uh, po uh, um, politics, is good. So that's, that's, what, that's what they did, and, uh, and it, again, it worked. So what is this? <laughs> um, all of a sudden, you know, we just you know, saw that uh, for 18 minutes, uh, many MAGA accounts in America talked about the sudden death of Russian um, UN ambassador Vitaly Churkin. How on earth, you know, people in Oklahoma, you just, you know, could be, I mean, could learn, maybe they could learn. Why did they care? So, but for 18 minutes, then they just, they, they of course, they removed it, but we saved the screen. So this is, I think, about 400 accounts. I personally did, did it. So, again, it's a, it's a primitive technology, so that's it. But, of course, it could be far more effective. Now, AI, offers new opportunities. And uh, we, we all know that's the, um, now that's the, that's the greatest concern. And that at, at the, the summit in Geneva, President Biden gave Putin the list of critical infrastructure not to attack. I'm not here to, 
to judge the validity of this move. I don't think it was very smart. Yeah, because it's just expecting, you know, the predatory has to be, to be um, scared by a warning. OK, but done is done. Um, here is, just, you know, it's the, uh, it's, I'm sitting on stage uh, with, um, uh, with one of the um, chief managers of Alas Software. I've been working with this company for more than five years, about six years working with them. And we talked about, uh, talked about um, using AI both for attack and defense. Because that's, that's not, now it becomes a game. And that's, that's about the importance of human, human element in that. And I, uh, I can suggest this on, uh, you can see on my uh, um, on social media, but also on Avast. I had more than 30 um, uh, essays over five years uh, writing pr about privacy and security. Again, it's a long story, so again, it's not exactly cybersecurity. It's more about, you know, how we, how we, how we humans on the customer side uh, turn to be complacent. So it's, 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 it's all, by the way, always amazes me that, you know, while everybody talks about protecting his or her accounts, but at the end of the day, we still know that the most popular password is one to eight. Second one is one to nine. Yes, be my guest. So it's the, it's, it's that, there's something that I call this the uh, digital hygiene. Just it's very difficult to explain. I mean, this is the, we wash our hands, we brush our teeth. So why not do simple things? Now you cannot, of course, save yourself from really serious attacks, but not probably 90% of the problems caused by total complacency and, and unwillingness to, to even to look, you know, just at, at things that you can do. By the way, that's also you know, related to the fact that most of the uh, manuals, they have the, uh, sort of the, the provisions for your you know, for IoT, for your washing machine, at page 75. You don't read it, the hacker does. And just, that's, that's, that's quite amazing. That's, by the way, guys, if you have smart homes, you don't understand that it's, it's very vulnerable. I just, with a last team I did, on many big stages, we did a few you know, demonstrations how you can hack the, uh, the smart home, because the, the, the the uh, resilience of your home system dep depends on the weakest link. And it could be even coffee machine. Because all these big you know, companies that have been doing this coffee washing machine and God knows what you know, for a century or so, they have no idea how to do the, the security. And that's a problem. So, and but people, it's, it's so fashionable, again, especially during the COVID year. So it's, 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 it was gold mine for, 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 for hackers. Uh, and again, it's, it's companies like Avast or Norton, they can do so much, but if people don't do that, it's, I remember once, you know, I said, said I was CEO of Avast, you know, and I just, uh, in, in London, just before COVID. We always say BC now, before COVID. So, and, uh, uh, and I, we talked about GDPR. Again, just, I'm not, I think it's, 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 it imposes certain limitations on research, but I, that's the European decision. And uh, there was an argument, and I just looked at the audience, what, 250 people, just, you know, it's a tech conference. I said, yeah, just, I'm curious, how many of you can find the forget button in Google? Four or five hands? Okay, that's the, that tells you everything, you know, that's, that's about, about the validity of all these, you know, um, regulations that are being imposed, so. And uh, that's another interesting story, so I just, you know, I, um, I did a, during lockdown, so I had many conversations. So, and, uh, and one of them was with uh, Nicole Pellerous. So she's a great uh, um, um, uh, expert. And uh, let me just pick up the title of her book just to make sure because she had a great book. Uh, and uh, they, they, they tell me how the world ends. Yes, so this is, yes, I can just tell you exactly. So that's the, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is how they tell me the world ends. So that's the, yeah. So, um, and again, that was the same conversation. So this is not the same, it's just the same topic. So this is, it's, it's, uh, it's about uh, not, not so much human complacency. It's just, it's just you know, um, our misunderstanding of the role of the human in the whole process. Because again, this is, it's the, we cannot win on tech only. They also have the same tech. This is, even nuclear proliferation is, is a challenge. But in, 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 in AI, in cyber, you, it's easy, you know, you don't even have to move a person, you know, just it's, 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 it's everything can just travel, you know, online. And I think that's, we, we get, we need new creative ways of, of uh, using the advantage of free minds, people from the free world that can innovate. And most important, it's just, it's, it's, sometimes it's misunderstood, what's the biggest advantage of people who live in the free world? 
versus people who work in Russia or in China. We have freedom to fail. That's, the, that's everything. So this is, we, failure is unacceptable by authoritarian system. So yeah, they can fund 100 startups, but they have to know exactly which one will be Google. We know it's, it's random. So and the failure is, is an important element that makes our system, the, the, free, the system of the free world, dem democracy, is, is just no more flexible, but also more resilient and more productive. So, um, um, that's, you know, that's all on my, on my uh, mm, uh, social media, so all these talks, and you can find this more on, on the vast. And now just, you know, since one of the key, you know, just it's uh, areas where people being, I would say, brainwashed, and just, you know, this is, and, and given this, the very dystopian view of the future, it comes from uh, uh, Hollywood. I thought it would be probably appropriate to end up this talk. Uh, by the way, it was 40 minutes, not 45, so just I can tell you. So you, you stole five minutes, so that's why I can, I can go over the limit. As a chess player, I'm very sensitive because I can see, well, <laughs> I get a little time. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, when I show this, this image, they say, oh, it's dystopian. Actually, is it? Yeah, of course, the first one, Terminator, 1984. So that's, that's definitely dystopian. But when just we go for, oh, by the way, this one is not Photoshop. That's the, that's, 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 that's the real one. This is the, uh, the real Terminator. So just he uh, had chess as the important part of his kids' education. So and he even played some chess. We, we met in his office uh, in uh, 2003, in March. So uh, the game ended very quickly in a draw. I was not that stupid to win. <laughs> yeah, and I think I, he was so much encouraged that he ran for the governor of California six months later and won. <laughs> yeah, so um, now, human plus machine defeats superior machine alone. Both in the second and in the third one, it was a combination of a human mind and old, not obsolete, you remember, uh, computer, uh, it's a machine, fighting together. And they're beating superior machine. That's, that's, again, that's the way to emphasize the importance of, of human contribution. Because in, in every endeavor so where we bring AI, it's the, it's, it's, the trick is, is to find exactly what this task uh, uh, is needed from us, from this combined force of human machine, and what exactly we can add to this machine. Because the worst thing you can do is to compete with a machine where machine is perfect. If machine does 95% of the job, fine. Don't challenge it. It could do 97. It's very important to find exactly what, what is missing, the, the missing component. And, that's, and to come as close as possible to, to, to 100%. So that's the, that's the Terminator. But there's one more, actually, which I think is even more relevant. That's my favorite Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back. 1980, the first movie. I watched it in 1980 in a big screen. I was a member of powerful Soviet chess squad, played in Malta, chess Olympiad, and on the way back to Moscow, we stopped, stopped in Rome. Everybody wanted to see Michelangelo, I wanted to see Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was 17, yes, you can for Now, this is the moment. Han Solo is desperate. He's trying to escape from Imperial Guard, and he's heading his spaceship to uh, the asteroid field. And C-3PO in a squeaky voice is telling him that the, the chance of, of succeeding, just surviving in asteroid field, approximately 3,720 3, to 1. Never tell me the odds. Now, why this picture is important? Because it actually tells us a lot about human-machine relations. Why? Because both are right. Machine always knows the odds. The chance of surviving are slim to none. But machine can never understand the importance of this one. Because what's the alternative? To turn back, to be caught by Imperial Guard, eventually be interrogated, tortured, killed. From machine's perspective, that's better than to be killed in 10 seconds. From a human perspective, is no go. So only we can understand that this one actually has much bigger value. So that's, that's, again, that's an essence. It's, 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 it explains the nature of our relations with computers. We know what matters most. Machines don't. 
It's the, and uh, that's why, you know, I'm, I believe that, you know, that we should be optimists about the future. It's, uh, uh, these machines, they, they're not uh, magic wands, but they're not terminators. They're not harbingers of utopia or dystopia. They're tools created by us. And I always emphasize that, you know, this is, we here in the free world have a huge advantage of, of entertaining free minds, freedom of competition, freedom of innovation, and freedom to fail. So that's why, you know, I think the future should be bright, but it's, uh, it's not, not automatic. So thank you very much. Oh, 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 I'm happy, happy to, yes. Yeah, it's, this is the. You know, I loved your uh, conclusions, I have to say. That's uh, fantastic. And this freedom to fail was also fantastic. But uh, tell us a little bit about this human and machine de defeating superior machine. Uh, so tell us a little bit about wh why, what, what, I mean, apart from this sort of philosophy of understanding it, we also think that humans and machines, and in some ways a challenge for us, how do you get humans and machines to work together? So tell us a little bit more. Uh, it, it, actually, it's not the theory. That's the, this is, it's, it's based on quite a solid evidence from the game of chess. Um, and not only game of chess. So there's this, this, there are already many, many reports, you know, from medicine, for instance, from radiology. They just, it's, it's, it's the performance of a human and a computer beats the, b both the best human and, of course, the best computer. In chess, we had the first experiment, I think, all going back to 2005, when we had this internet event called the Freestyle Chess. And, the, uh, and it had strong computers, very powerful, almost as, you know, just it's even better than, 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 than uh, uh, Deep Blue. They had strong humans plus uh, 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 grandmasters with computers. The event was won by two Americans, club players, with three computers, because that's, it's, it's about interface. And, and, and since that, there were, there were many, there were many uh, um, uh, um, experiments in different, in different fields. So um, uh, uh, there's the, recently there was a book of uh, Professor Eric Topol, uh, who now became an expert on COVID-19 uh, uh, on, on, on Twitter, and is a very good friend. So, and uh, he actually talked about, many of them called Kasparo Formula, because I was the first one to write about it. And this, in the last decade, there were a number of things. One is this recently came from Milano. The same, same idea. They, they keep, you know, measuring the performance of human plus a computer uh, versus just computer or you know, experts. So, and it's, they always have, you know, just always ahead. So it's, and I think it's very natural because, you know, it's, it's, it's again, it depends very much on, 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 on the technique. Because sometimes you'd better have, uh, let's say, experienced nurse than a professor to work. Because it's it's very important to not, as I said, not to challenge machine on it, on its on, a, on, a, on in uh, in the area of its superiority. The moment you understand exactly what this machine needs, that becomes a very powerful combination. Because at the end of the day, it's all about how to get as close to 100% as possible. And that's just, if we know exactly what this machine is missing, because it comes very close to to 90% plus. So that's so it's no it's no longer theory. It's a, it has a very solid practical uh, um, base behind it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's a great talk. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just take off actually on what you just mentioned about about the healthcare too. So I work in the healthcare space, and um, we often talk about how um, you know AI will not replace the physicians, but physicians who don't know AI will be replaced. So so the idea that Again, same, same thing with what you're saying. But fundamentally, again, what is it that will, that makes us say that, that human and machines are better than machines? Is it the value system that cannot be programmed yet and there's biases in these routines and, you know, I mean, algorithms? Is it that we still, the machines can still not uh, calculate or understand that one way far in the future or but what is it if you could compute everything that's possible machines should be better than humans or not or or is it the value system or something at a different level you, so, you, you just said you just give an answer you said everything that's possible 
Anyways. But the key is it cannot solve the game. It cannot solve everything. There's no, not, no way to calculate everything that is possible. There's always the gap. There's always a room where a machine fails, sh uh, okay, comes short. So um, uh, yesterday, again, this is, this is always a limit of time. Yesterday at my talk, so actually I had, a, I had a, um, one slide. Uh, it's a great book by one of the founding fathers of AI, Joseph, Joseph Weizenbaum. It's Computer Power and Human Reason. And back in 1976, back in 1976, he actually talked about this very subtle difference between deciding and choosing. Machines decide, it's computational. Humans choose. Is what's the, the difference is that if you ask computer why, why the, this recommendation was made, you go down, down, down to the, to, to the bottom of this tree because I was told so. With humans, I want it. So it's, 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 it's the, the choice that is not limited by, by certain uh, um, uh, uh, restrictions. That it's, 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 I'm not saying it's good or bad, because again, humans are more vulnerable. That's why we have to know exactly so what we can offer this machine. And again, remember, we belong to last few decimal places. As long as we know that, and our role is fine-tuning, or the transfer of the information from one closed system to another, that's, the, that's, that's, that's fine. Again, recognizing what is what we can do best, so not to not to to become to become redundant. And I again, as for the threats to the jobs, look, new technologies throughout centuries destroyed some industries before creating new ones. So and you know, this is the the complaint about machines threatening uh, threatening uh, the well-being of of common citizens. First, you know when, when it was the first time when it was just, you know, so eloquently presented? In 1812, in the House of Lords, by somebody called Lord Byron. He talked about, you can find his speech, he, it was his main speech in the, in the House, of Com, House of Lords, and he talked about the machines that are going to destroy, you know, this is the good, the good people, because, okay, that's, 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 that was, somehow it was the beginning of a lot of movement. In, um, and uh, I don't want to sound callous, but it's, it's all about, it's this, well, that when I, I briefly said about, you know, me losing to the blue, but also offering, you know, just it's like it's uh, um, an opportunity for many people to see the light and just joining, joining uh, uh, computer science. Same as here. Yes, many good jobs in, um, the free, in, in America or Europe, let's say in radiology, I just mentioned radiology, can be lost to the computers. But what is the, the other side of the coin? It's getting cheaper. More people have access to that. And millions of people in the free world, uh, in, 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 in beyond the free world, in Africa, in Asia, have, will have access because we have now internet. So yes, it's, this, it's, it's not a simple win-win, but it's, as humanity, we always win with, with, with new technology. Yeah. So you know, you talked about Google um, learning from various, you know, large number of possible moves. Um, that reasoning to the best of our understanding from machine learning algorithms either talks about the moves at the raw level or it looks for patterns among the moves and patterns of patterns and so on. I wonder if you can look into your own head and say, is your strategy space, your intuition, your planning, is that speaking the same language of patterns or there is some other abstract version that you use to strategize? Uh, I, I wish I could, I could, I could tell you exactly how it works. So <laughs> I'm afraid this is the biggest secret of the universe. Uh, you just, uh, um, um, you know, naturally we use all the same components. I also played games. I remember them so as much as I can. So and and I I, I look at the patterns and I might when I say intuition, intuition based on certain experience. It's the and uh, um, I always say that this, your intuition is. You should treat it as, as a muscle because you know you want to get stronger. You exercise intuition. Also, you have to trust it and just you know see how it works. It may not work all the time, uh, but again, it's, it's we. I think the difference is, is it's it's kind of imperfection, and that's that's why I think this. For instance, machines cannot be creative because the creativity is like alien word for a computer. Because creativity means that we actually we accept the fact that we can fail. Well, we don't know. This is if I come up with some something new, some new. I, Ideas based on my intuition and my experience and calculations, again, as much as I can do. I'm not sure about the outcome. The problem with a computer that is this, the, the failure is just, you know, is, is alien to the nature of the computer. It cannot just you know, consider anything that doesn't offer a better bottom line. 
So that's the that's that, that's that, that's a fundamental difference. And and for us, you know, just it's it's, it's the, the way to move forward. That's why I have been are, uh, of, uh, such a strong proponent of humans plus machine is just to find a way where we can, can cooperate again, recognizing what is our contribution to that. So that's the. Uh, but again, there are always similarities, of course, because decision-making process has the same components. Though this for machine is, is more rigid, in many ways it's more effective, but still, again, being rigid all the time, you know, just, you know, limits your ability to, to, um, uh, to see some of, the, some of the perspectives. As I said, the, the value of this one that could be actually much bigger that machine will never recognize. Cool.